I can remember when I was first exploring Luma Wipes at OBS Studio, and my initial impression was that they were not super exciting. They were kind of plain Janey, not much going on with them, and I really never really considered them. But as of late, I've come back and taken a harder look at what they can do and how you can make custom Luma Wipes, and it is so much fun. I can't wait to show you. Let's get some. Electrify your online presence with live, live streaming. streaming. My dad was an officer in the Vietnam War, and he got there by taking a course called ROTC, which stands for the Reserved Officers Training Corps in college. They taught him to be a leader, and part of the lessons while taking these courses was how to teach. And the concept basically was boiled down to the need to create chapters when teaching. And so I'm going to apply specific and clear chapters in this tutorial, and I'd love to hear your opinion as to whether or not this tutorial was easier to learn. So let me know in comments what you think, and if you think it's better, then maybe I will continue using chapters from here on out. So let me know. Okay, here's what we're gonna go over right now. We're gonna talk about how OBS uses imagery to generate a transition, transition speed control. We're gonna go over the transition softness parameter. Then we're gonna learn how to add your own custom transition, and then we're gonna experiment using your face as a transition. Yes, here we go. So how does this all work? How does OBS create a Luma wipe? Well, it comes from a grayscale image, which basically means it's a black and white image and variants of gray. And it analyzes that image and creates transparency in the direction from black to white. Let me explain what I'm showing you. I'm gonna go into the Explorer on my PC here. I'll go to my C drive. I'll go into Program Files, I'll find OBS Studio, the installation folder. I will then click Data, open that up, go into OBS Plugins, and look for the OBS Transitions folder. There it is right there. Open it up and click Luma Lower Score Wipes. So here we have all kinds of grayscale imagery, and you can see I've been experimenting with my face as well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's take it the barn door dash H image. Let me open that up in Photoshop real quick so we can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, here's the image. I'll zoom in just a tad so we can see it. Okay, that works. So OBS will analyze this photo and begin to show transparency starting from the black color and move out to the white edges. So the best way to remember this is sort of the, the biblical reference, which is first there was darkness and then there was light. The direction starts from black and moves to white, right? So if I was to go into OBS Studio real quick, select Luma Wipe as the transition type, click the cog wheel, open up properties, and select the barn door here, which I believe was horizontal, barn door horizontal, and click preview, you'll see how it works. Black to white. See how that works? Now I will show you how to control speed with different types of gradients. And the best way to understand this is by showing you an example. So if I go into Photoshop here, I've created an image that has a gradient that goes from an absolute black to absolute white. Below it, it also goes to absolute white on the far right, but it starts out with a very subtle gray. So let's put that into OBS Studio. I've already done it. I'll go into the gear here, go into properties, this graphic is called speeds. I've got it all set up and I will show you how to do this in just a few minutes. I will click preview, watch. Did you see that? So let's really slow this down and take a hard look at what's going on. So initially when you push play on this thing, the, the big black section of the upper gradient that's very harsh immediately goes transparent. And as time passes, it slowly comes across the screen. And when it gets to the middle of the screen, then the subtle gradient below starts to move and it moves real fast across the screen. And when it reaches the far right, the upper white section of the upper gradient just goes immediately transparent. So the characteristics of the top gradient means that it goes very, very slowly. The bottom one, because the colors are almost identical, it moves very, very quick. And when it moves to white, because it's so fast, it immediately takes control and makes the whole thing go transparent. That's the takeaway. 
Okay, now we're going to talk about the transition softness parameter. I took the top gradient and stretched it all the way down to make a new image, I put it in OBS. So when I hit the preview button, you can see now the line is very thin. It doesn't have much softness in it. In order to make an adjustment to that softness, there is a softness parameter here with an up and down. If I hit the up key a couple times and go around 65.065, as you can see now, the line is really, really soft. If, also, you can invert the transition by checking off this, and if you hit preview, it goes in reverse, goes this way. That's cool too. Okay, let's talk about making your own custom Luma wipe. What you see here is a custom Luma wipe grayscale. As you can see, it's got two gradients, one with the S, and it's black going to the T that's white and the reverse in the background. It's gonna do this kind of effect. I'm gonna now place this ping into the right path. And the path you can find is right below here. I'll leave it there while I talk about this. And let's see, here's the folder where it resides. And as you can see, I've already placed it in here. It's called getsome.png. Now, upon you placing it in this folder, now what you have to do is make sure that this new image resides in the pulldown in OBS Studio. So first thing is first, make sure you shut down OBS because you need to restart it after making these changes. So shut down OBS and scroll around until you find the wipes.json file. And this, if you open it up, I have brackets. You can use Notepad or any program that you like. When I double click it, it gives me this code, okay? And this is what tells OBS what to show in the pulldown when you make the selection. So. What I want to do right now is go over, first and foremost, what this syntax does. The stuff, the purple text between the quotes, that is the physical name that you see in the pulldown. And then the orange file reference is the file that it uses when you make the selection, okay? Cut and dry. Here are some issues that you will come across when playing with this. Number one, you're limited to a certain amount of pulldowns. Okay, so you may start adding graphics and the list gets longer and longer and longer. And then after a while, you're like, wait a minute, I don't see it in the pull down. Is that a syntax issue that I did? Was it a mistake on my behalf? The answer is no. You just got to go back and delete a couple uh, other pull down references and then it'll show up. That's number one. Number two, a lot of people will go in here and copy the last line and use that as a reference to make the new call, right? But here's the thing, the last line does not have a comma, and so it's gonna screw the script up and it won't work. So what I recommend that you do, okay, is always copy the second to the last line because that contains a comma, and place it before the last one, right? Like this, okay? And then you can make your changes to the name and the name of the file. And the last thing is, is what I'm showing you here, since I copied it, if you have two pull down calls, I'll call them, and they're the same name, nothing will show up at all in the pulldown. So make sure that every single one of these names are different so that you can see it in the pulldown. Those are the three things that are gonna trip you up. If you feel like these solutions don't fix your issue, you can always download a new instance of OBS. It'll be a zip file, unzip it, and you can go into the path of that zip file and find the original wipes.json file and just paste it over this and it'll be fixed. That's sort of the fallback plan, okay? Okay, so here's the official modification to the wipes.json file. I copy the second to last line. I hit a line return. I paste it. I highlight the purple text here and I type in get some. I then change the name of the ping file to get some. I hit save. I make sure that my OBS is shut down. I bring it back up. I hit the gear next to Luma Wipe that I've selected in Scene Transitions. I go to Properties, and there's Get Some already selected. And I hit Preview, and there it is. Works perfectly. So I know what you're probably thinking. What if you were to use your own face as a Luma Wipe transition for OBS Studio? And I've been experimenting with this concept for a little while now, and I've come up with the following style. Check it out. If I go into my editor, here is a highly disturbing photo of my face. This is the type of thing you see in your nightmares when you eat too much chocolate ice cream and pizza for dinner. <laughs> go in and make sure that it is a grayscale. And here's what I came up with. Black background 
and the darkness starts on one side of my face and then goes to light on the other. That way you see a progression from left to right. So if I bring it into OBS, you see this kind of effect. Now take a look at this. If it's on a light background and you click a scene with a dark background, it seems to work okay. You see my face going in there? But if I go back, it looks like a negative and it looks funky. So I don't know if it translates. It's still pretty cool, but sometimes it looks weird when it's going from dark to light. Now, if you're interested in taking your knowledge in respect to transitions to the next level, I've made a video using DaVinci Resolve, which is absolutely 100% free, to make stinger transitions that give you all the flexibility that you could dream of to do just about anything, including using sound, with Alpha Channel that loads very quickly on your computer, very little drop frames and very little CPU usage. I've provided a tutorial that covers the whole thing. You will absolutely love this. I will see you over there. Regardless, best wishes to you. Stay strong, keep fighting. Your channel will grow, trust me, I'm proof of it. I've never given up, so you never give up, and I guarantee you, you will do well as time passes. Just keep fighting. I will see you later. Best wishes, stay strong, and keep fighting. Stay strong and keep fighting.